Welcome to our course, Acquiring Coding Skills in Python. In this part of our course, we're going to learn about the use of for loop statement. We're going to test um, four different scenarios and we have these different things that we're going to do in this project. Number one is um, we're going to consider storing monthly income in the list and finding out the total income for the whole month. In preparation for number three, we're going to have number two first for you to be able to know how to use range. So we are going to print out one to 10 using range function. And number three, which is in connection to number one, this is actually just a, an extension of um, number one. So in our monthly income example, we're going to print week number and its corresponding income. And then in the end, we're going to print total income. And after that, by the use of for loop, we're going to search for a lost item in your house, for example. And when you find that particular item that is lost, we're going to stop searching. So let's get dive into our coding. Let's go back to our PyCharm. Basically, you're going to, if you don't have yet your file here, what you have to do is that you're going just to go to your file and then new. So because we already have it here, we have this new project here for a loop. So that's where we're going to store our project. So our problem number one, and we're going to store our monthly expense or monthly income in the list. So first thing that we are going to do is we're going to make a variable wherein we store our income. So let's have the income. Let's just name this one ink is to make this um, shorter. So in a month, we have four weeks. So for example, in week number one, you have, shall we say 155. In week number two, you have 120. Week number three, you have 345. And last week, you have this income, 120, 29. All right, there you have it. So basically, what you do is that you total all of these numbers here. So for a traditional computation, what we do is we do something like this. Total is equal to, then we have p i n then so this one ink zero is actually the index number we have ink then one then ink then two then we are going to add the last one plus ink number three and then we print or total print total so this is the traditional way of doing this and we're going to run this one one for loop okay then we get 749 so this is again the easiest way to do it that is if you have just a few number of entries in your list but the problem is that when we have our data science project, or just a very simple data analysis, we are not just doing four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten counting of different numbers or, or items in a certain data set. Actually, when you do a real data science project, you would have hundreds of thousands or even millions of numbers that you are going to add, you're going to divide, and so on and so forth. This one is not advisable and it's not actually scalable. For that, what we're going to do is we're going to use a for loop for us to be able to do computations or the computations of hundreds of thousands or even millions of rows. So what we will have this time is we will just comment this one. And then what we will do is this total. So we're going to initiate this with the total variable, which is equal to zero. And then we're now going to use the for loop for item in ink. So we have now the total is equal to total plus item plus item. And then I'm print total. Okay, so let's 
do this because we have already run this particular notebook. Let's run it. Okay, now we have 749. So as you could see in this case, we don't write each item just like what we did in here. So we just use the for loop to do that. So for you to be able to see what's going on in each line, let's debug this one first. So let's have this and we're going to debug each one. So we have use a break here. So then let's go to run. okay now so as you could see in this case um we have here a list then it has one two three four four items then let's do this one so that means we're going to do the next line okay so that means it starts first with zero because we have started with the zero total is zero and then for the next one then we have item number one or item zero um, here is 155 as you could see in this case so that means we total that to zero and then so as you could see in there the total is 155 because zero plus 155 is 155 here the total then next one and then it iterates 155 plus the next item which is 120 and then we get this 275 okay then we're going to proceed to the next item which is 345 then okay then let's get okay now we have the total which is 620 and we have the last one 129 let's have it so item 129 or integer 29 and then we have 749 and then as you could see, uh, while the items are not yet done totaled, then the highlighted one is just in this part of our program. So let's go to the next one. Okay, print total. Now the total is 749. So that's how it works. That means if um, you would like to know how your code works, then you're going to debug it. Let's go to our Python console. Okay. And make it smaller for now okay so let's make it shorter here right so let's first comment this one out i want to show you something before we proceed so our next one is we're going to print out 1 to 10 using range so how to do that so we're going to use for i in range 10 to 7 Okay, so don't get confused with 1 and 11 in this case. So it just means that we start with 1 and we end with 11. So that means what will be printed is only from 1 to 10. So let's let's comment this one out also. Okay, so let's run this. So as you could see, we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Also, um, you can do another calculation. So for example, we would like to get the range from 1 to 10. And at the same time, we would like to square that particular item. So what we will do is just we're going to do this. So let's run this. Now you have in there, so 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, or 2 times 2, 3 times 3, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now we are done how to use it. What we will do this time is we will go back to our first example. So here, in our monthly income example, we're going to print week, number, and income. And then in the end, we're going to print total income. So how are we going to do that? So we will just comment this one first out. Okay. We'll go to the next one. We will just copy this so we could get the same result later on we will also copy this one and then this time what we will do is we're going to use now the range so for i in range then then we have ink and then we're going to print 
and then we will have one or we just i then plus one then income link of i and then we're going to have total is equal to total ink so basically what we're going to have in this case is that we're going to show the income for this is supposed to be week sorry um week okay the income for a particular week of the month so that means week one to week number four and then we will show the corresponding income for that particular week the next thing is we're going to print the total expense for my total income i mean total income is so let's run this okay so my total income is 749 so let's put a period in this case because it's a sentence run it again so there you have it you have here let's make it bigger okay so week one your income is 155 week number two your, your income is 120 week number three your income is 345 week number four your income is 129 and so adding all of these your total income is 749 or 749 so how cool is that then this time uh, we're going to comment this one out first and we will proceed to our next project so we're going to search for a lost item in our house and then when we find it we're going to stop searching so how are we going to implement this kind in python so let's go back to our pycharm we are going first to have this key look with this chair that means a certain item can be found in a chair so just like for example you have lost your car key and you would like to find that car key in a certain part of your house the key location is the chair so you for example you have left your car key in the chair or on the chair so locations we have for example room then so let me say bedroom to make it more specific then we have dining room we have shower room all types of room and then we have let's change this one into garage then have here closet and we have example let's have here garage comma so this time we're going to use our for loop so for i in locations locations oops double click right uh this time um we're going to combine the for loop and the if statement so for i in locations if we're going to use quality in this case i is equal equal to garage to let's just have key location key look pin he is found in i let's just use this one because for me this is more in interesting actually and uh, this is an elegant way of printing is found in and let's have a period in this case okay and then else if it's not in the key location or if not in that i else print we will have key is not found found in let's have okay this one and don't forget the f before so let's execute this so we will find what this one would be f string empty expression not allowed okay something is wrong but we have missed something here so let's execute this one again okay now we have in here so key is not found in bedroom key is not found in the dining room key is not found in the shower room key is found in the garage and key is not found in the closet so so this is how it works let's have a bonus lesson here so we have a 
while loop. So let's comment this one out first. While loop is actually just very similar to the use of for loop or for statement. So for example, sometimes we just would like to not show something in our coding. I mean the result of the code. So for example, for i in range 1 to 6. So in this case, what we're going to do is that we're going to print the values from 1 to 5. But then when a number is even, we want to skip that. So if i below 2 equal equal 0, continue. Then print i. So basically what we do here in this case is we want to print the numbers 1 to 5 and we skip even numbers and we would like to only print the odd numbers but at the same time we square that okay so let's execute this okay so we have 1 1 times 1 is 1 3 times 3 is 9 and then 5 times 5 is 25 what about the while loop so while loop just a few information about the while loop while loop or while loop takes only one condition and until that condition is satisfied to be two, it will keep on iterating. So for example, we have is equal, i is equal to one. So while, so this is the condition that I have just mentioned where we have less than or equal to five, then we're going to print i. And i is equal to i plus, let's execute this one. So there you go. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the, this part of our program is actually very important because if we are not going to do i equal to 1 plus 1, then it's going to continue infinitely. So let's show you this for you to be able to know what I'm talking. So we're going to run this. See, it iterates, right? So that's why it's really, very important to have this one. Let's stop this one first. Okay, so let's go back to this. All right, so there you go. That's why this one is really very important. Do you want to know more about this channel? Let's click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free, like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.